What's up, everybody? My name is Lee Shaner, and you're tuned into You Feel Me. You just put out a new record. Yeah. This is your debut project? Is that what yeah, you're calling I, it? I mean, I mean, I've been doing music for a minute, um, solo Like, yeah. um, this is my second project. But yeah, me and Ned, like, linked, and we made the Bully Project, and it's going crazy, like... How long ago did you guys link? Um... I dropped 90 in April. Yeah. And he reached out to me. So it was probably like a little bit after April. So fast. Yeah. I mean, that's, very like overnight fast. Yeah, it was like kind of like scary. Two and a half months or something yeah. of just work. Yeah. When we first linked, it was like we never left. We just we stayed in the studio. And Ned, Ned Arb, um, is known for having a real ear for this shit. And he was like... I noticed. <laughs> he was like on it with you. I know, yeah. He, ASAP. He's he, he's he, as soon as he found out about you, I feel he's like, he, this is next. Yeah. Hi, that's high praise. Yeah. When he when he found out about me, I, it's, it's kind of like surreal, Loki, because I know he really believes in like my music and stuff. So he pushes it yeah. really hard like nobody's ever done. And I feel like that's kind of what like an artist needs. Um, kind of like what I was missing, low key, just somebody just to believe in me. Somebody in your corner. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And, and he's a great teammate. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's exactly so what I was going to say. It's like, you got a little team now. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's, a, he's a great coach. He's a good mentor. I wow. learned a lot. And like, no, no. Listen to all real. these words. These are the, hey, if you're, <laughs> if you're an aspiring artist out there right now, you need to be listening to her because I always tell people, yo, the best artists are coachable. Yeah. And they're yeah. willing to learn. I, he teaches me a lot. Yeah. A lot about my voice and how I should just come off on a track i've definitely like learned um i just i feel like on the tape i definitely got um got to know my 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 voice even way more mm. and so it just i keep keep you know going going way harder than when i work with him i, I actually was like in writer's block yeah before i met him right and um once he started making beats in front of me, I was like, oh, Let's this is it. how it goes. Yeah. Like, we just, like, I, I got to experience with, with him. So that's why it was like dope, for sure. That's amazing. H had you heard of him or his work beforehand? No, yeah. I feel like a dick. No, that's fine. <laughs> I, I feel like that's really interesting. So what was it that he said that convinced you like, oh, yeah, this, um, this is a guy I should work with? This is funny because I guess like when 90 dropped, whatever, kind of went viral, um, a whole bunch of hit ups. I was just like, I'm a horrible at even checking my DMs. I I, I, I suck at that. But anyways, yeah. I was going through it, um, my DMs, and I was just like, okay, I, I guess I have to pay attention. It's a very my check. I'm not even going to cap. Yeah. So I opened it up. And then he sent me like a couple beats. And I was like, wow, wow, this is like freaking hard as hell. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so he's like, yeah, we should link, da, 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 da. And then we just linked. and Yeah, because I mean, what, what separates somebody from just all the randos and the DMs? It, was it the blue check mark? Is it, it the blue check mark? It like, was sort of the blue check mark. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. First yeah. of all, see, like, see Ned, like, what do you want to make with me? Like, what do you really want to, like, I, I didn't know none of his, like, yeah. resume or whatever. So I was like, I, I sure why not like yeah. I, I don't see and I was definitely at a point where I was just like um just do it like when I first linked up with DJ Flip to do uh -huh. my um 90 track it was so spontaneous so I was like at a point in my music where I was like yeah I might as well just link see what's going on right and did it feel right from the get-go yeah yeah it felt it didn't feel forced and that's kind of that's kind of another reason why we, we were able to do a whole project together because I feel like you can't do that a lot with producers because some producers just see money some producers right. just see you know just something fast like and I feel like it wasn't really and me only having like six like at the time like 6k followers is like yeah. I don't know. It was just kind of, it was kind of, I feel like it was genuine. So I yeah. kind of had to work with, I feel like I had to work with them. Yeah, that's know? dope. Yeah. On the first song on Damn, I mean, you you have this line where you say, first rap bitch to make it out that the rib. Is, period. Yeah, period, I love that baby. line. And so <laughs> let's talk about that. From Riverside originally. Riverside, California. East born Riverside. and raised? I was born in San Diego. Yeah. Or like Escondido is kind of like oh, yeah, San I know Diego. Escondido. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I moved to Riverside in like first grade, second grade. Uh -huh. um, and I kind of, yeah, grew up 
ever since. My mom was in the um, Air Force, so. Oh, kinda, my dad was in the Air Force. Yeah, really? Yeah. 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 I was kind of like an army brat, not really. Yeah. yeah. I, I moved one time to like this place called Lompoc yeah. on the Air Force Base. I, I know Lompoc yeah. too, up past oh, Santa my Barbara, God, right? Did we just, yeah. we were probably like down the street. No, so that. I'm from Alaska because of the Air oh, Force, wow. but I only moved one time as well. I was born in San Antonio and then I ended up in Alaska because oh, wow. of the Air Force. Oh, yeah, I've been in San Antonio. My then, mom had like her boot camp over Yeah, there, Lackland. So, yeah. Lackland Air Force Base. That's where so I was born. So I seen her graduate and all that. It was dope. No shit. Yeah, but I went back. I lived out there for like a year then i went right back to Riverside. so you didn't have to do too much air force brat stuff no she yeah. that probably would have like destroyed me i honestly when i went when i went to lompoc it was just like it was definitely like a culture shock for yeah. me it was like it's a lot of white people up there i'm not gonna cap <laughs> like i didn't want to say it you said it so i feel like it's cool it's a whole lot of white people. Yeah, yeah so it wasn't it wasn't moving me creatively i feel like i couldn't it's like a box basically how old were you when you were up there i was sixth grade probably oh, yeah, okay. or like the fifth grade i don't know yeah i was there for like two years and yeah. then i begged my mom to um to to let's move back to riverside yeah she found a job air force base out there so nice i grew up I grew Which, up so in, she was career air force or was she just in for a few years no nah, she's still in there oh air she's still force. in the air yeah, force yeah right she's doing big things out there that's dope she's like the type of i'm like what do you do at your job she's like i can't tell you top secret like, is she offer, is she officer and nco i don't even know nothing about that does she have a college degree oh yes i mean she's oh, actually the, she's actually in college right now to work on all that so, so she's probably becoming yeah, uh, she's, becoming she's, an officer yeah my mom has always been like that she's always been next level got to do it I, like very independent person yeah right um that's kind of where i get it from nice so yeah she's 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 working on it i know that that's dope yeah my dad was nco so he did not he like flunked out of college really? and joined the air force but he was career of 23 years or something like that I yeah think. yeah she's still there i think she did it like for us for a kid she saw a bigger opportunity yeah than what it was and, and a lot of people it. don't realize like how diverse the military is i think yeah, it's honestly. a lot of people that are like i'm gonna i'm gonna join the military so that my kids have more opportunities yeah, for different reasons. Of shit, you know yeah, what I mean? For different reasons. And so even in Alaska, it was like a very kind of diverse community that I came from just because like you get people I from imagine all being over. Alaska. That would be crazy actually. Yeah, I gotta go back next week. Ooh, yeah, have so, fun. yeah, my, my my brother had a um had a, a son, so I'm going to meet my nephew for oh, the wow, first that's time. That's dope. Yeah, it's fun in the summer. But anyhow, so San Diego, you're there for a little a couple years, you yeah, probably not, remember anything about not, Escondido. Yeah, not really. yeah, so then Riverside, what's it like when you move to Riverside as a kid? That's when you're starting I feel school. Like yeah? I was just supposed to be there. Yeah, really? Just, yeah. I just felt like that's where I met all my brothers, all yeah. my sisters. That's where I like the people that drive me now to this day. That's where I met them. So it kind of felt like I've always was supposed to be there. Uh-huh. And to even to be like I'm from the IE yeah. and who I am right now, it, I feel like it's pretty dope. I don't, I don't. It's really, different. It's different, but it's dope. Like, yeah, exactly. Let's talk about like the IE doesn't have the biggest like no. reputation in the rap nah. world. Not a lot of people make it out the the IE, which is why First that rap f- to make, to make it out, out the rib. rib that was like stuck out to Dang. me because like I, I've been around or or circulating the Los Angeles rap scene for almost 20 years now, and there aren't that many people that yeah. do kind of make it out the IE. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of the, the, we kind of like. The IE and the LA are kind of rivals. I don't know why. Right. Like we're cool. We're, yeah, we're good. We're straight. <laughs> there, and there's but there's a strong like sense of localism yeah. down there. And there's dudes that do shit around the IE yeah. for many yeah. years. Yeah, we're and definitely low key. That's yeah. why. I, that's kind of why I fuck with it. I right. mean, the IE is basically what you make it. I feel like anywhere you live is is what you make it. Yeah. Um. No, but. I don't really. I don't. I'm not ashamed of being from the IE. I've, I've never been like that. Yeah, Somebody yeah. asked me where I'm from. I'm like, I'm from Riverside. That's interesting that you say you're, you're not. You use the word ashamed because I feel like yeah, some people try to hide some the people, fact that yeah. they're from the IE. They're like, nah, I'm from LA yeah, or like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, every if you say that about the yeah. IE, people get bad when people say that. Like, we don't ever try to claim, or well, I don't ever try to claim. I can't speak for everybody. Yeah. I don't ever try to claim we're from LA. That yeah. I, I, it not really make sense. I'm yeah. from. Riverside County. And so. what, what was Riverside like as you were growing up? Um, Growing up in Riverside, what a time. It's like, I'm only 20. Oh, yeah. So, so you're, yeah. I mean, this so is like, like talking I'm about still, last week. Yeah, but, like yesterday I was there. No. But tw- I mean, 20, you're an official adult I'm now. So what, adult. You know what I mean? Period. So what, what, was it yes. like when, what was it like when you're like seven, eight in Riverside? Seven, was there a lot eight. of stuff to do? Seven, eight, I was going outside, had to be home before the street lights come on type. That type of shit. Um, yeah, I kind of lived in like every apartment in Riverside. Like I moved around to every jump. So it's like I kind of knew everybody. I knew where um, 
the homie live. Like, I go knock on their door. We just go hang out, go to the pool. It's very R- hot out riding there. Riding bikes or yeah, what? Yeah, riding bikes. Yeah. My, my sister actually used to put, like, the little can on the bike, used to ride it, make the motorcycle yeah. noise. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was dope. I, it's, like I said, it's what you make it, yeah. like, everywhere you go. If you if you think you're not going to have fun somewhere, then you probably won't have fun. If you wake up going to, like, I'm going to have a bad day, you probably will. Yeah. You probably have a bad day. So I, I kind of, I'm, like, the type of person, like, I wake up. And try to be the most positive because I feel like positivity is key. Like right now, especially, yeah. it's very it's key. So absolutely, nah, it's dope. And so it's hot as shit in Riverside. You said you would just be jumping bro. from pool to pool, or what? We jump, Did you? Uh, guys, we were climbing gates, jumping in pools. I was pools, gonna bro. say you guys probably knew where all <laughs> yes, the like secret stashes yes. of water was. Huh? Yeah, we go to this. Um, I don't know what it's called, but now that we we go to like the most popping pools, um, the ones like the waterfalls. Yeah. Um, people in the apartment, like the manager in the apartment, like. Like where's um where do you guys live? Yeah, um, yeah. That's when you just book it. You just leave. <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah, it was dope. I mean, there was like you go to the apartments where like a whole bunch of kids are staying, mm-hmm. and we would like play in those type of pools. Still get kicked out by the end of the day. Yeah. You probably didn't. It probably wasn't the most fun time at the pool, but it, it was dope. Like yeah, it's hot as hell. Yeah, right. It's hot as hell. What's the like kind of sociological makeup of Riverside? Is it predominantly a Latino community? Um yeah, yeah Latino and Black. Yeah. Um, few white people um it was it's, it's kind of like a segregated though it's kind of yeah, like yeah, you, tell it's, me about it's that. like it's like a click thing like okay. black people hang out with black people mexican i mean there's few it's it's few little mixed groups but it's not i feel like we could be together more right i mean I, my, the high school i went to like there was a big race war in it no way yeah what happened? I, I it was like the year before i came though. no shit yeah it was like a riot i mean it, it, it'd be like that sometimes blacks and browns or what? yeah oh yeah no shit yeah it'd be like that sometimes wow. but and what was your family like you got you got brothers and sisters yeah i have a whole bunch of brothers and sisters how um, many can you name them all? No. Oh, we <laughs> I could. No, yeah. I have four step sisters and brothers. Yeah. Um, and three. Oh, wow, 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 hold on. Wait, There's how a many? Lot. Yeah. <laughs> she is in like fingers four to count. Ste- I, and I have four half blood sisters and brothers as well. I don't have any full blooded brothers or sisters. So technically, I feel you're like I'm missing out. You're like an only child, technically. Technically, but not really. Are you I the mean, oldest? Then definitely not. No, okay. definitely not. Yeah. Um, I have. Three older sisters. Those are I'm half like the, the middle child. Okay. Uh, if if you can have a middle you. child, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like the middle child. But no, I I, I grew up with all my step brothers and sisters like in one house from mm-hmm. time like when I used to live in Lompoc, they used to like visit during the summer. Um, but yeah, we were all we couldn't stay inside. We were so loud. My Wait, mom was like, that, "Get out the house." So is it se- seven of you or eight of you? Um, in I'm trying to do okay. The math. Yeah, no, you got this. Yeah. Okay, so. At my mom's house, I had yeah. four step brothers and sisters, and my older sisters. So that's five. That's six of us. Yeah. And then my mom just had a kid, yeah. um, like five years ago. Oh, so wow. that's seven of us. Yeah, right. But it usually it usually is only like me, my two sisters in the house. They just okay. come over and visit. Yeah. On my dad's side, I have a brother and a sister. Yeah, right. So, yeah. Is your dad in Riverside too? My dad lives in Escondido. In Escondido, okay. So yeah, that he was... lives a little bit everywhere. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and did, did you split time between parents, or were you mostly with mom? Um, I was mostly with my mom. Yeah. yeah. How's your relationship with your dad, though? It's um, it's a relationship. You know why I always, you know why I ask. <laughs> This, why is, this is a, the theme of my podcast is always that like questionable fatherhoods yeah, make yeah. for great artistry. Yeah, every I, every I, artist I meet got like an iffy relationship with their dad. It's crazy. I, it's, it's just like um, I, <laughs> you don't gotta yeah, explain I, it. That, I, I know. I, I just explained it. No, why yeah, I you, asked. Def- That's you it. definitely explained That's it. it. It's just yeah. like um, it's it's pretty. It's like lessons. Yeah, he, ta- right. he taught me a whole bunch of lessons without probably being intentional about it. There but I go. definitely learned a lot. Um, a lot from my dad, even though I wasn't with him a lot, talked yeah. to him a lot. Um, right. He's a pretty dope guy, though. He's cool. Tell me about you as a student. Did you like school or did you try to skip school? Uh, what, what was up with you? Um, I dropped out of college. I couldn't do college. Yeah, that, where that were you wasn't trying to go? Fun. Honestly, um, I was I was at a community school, um, RCC. Yeah. And I stayed in for like about a couple months or one trimester. I wanted to be a forensic psychologist. Really? Yeah, it's kind of crazy, yeah, huh? Yeah. That is kind of crazy. Because yeah. uh, <laughs> I was in my high school, I went through this academy called Law Academy. Uh-huh. Um, so they taught me like all about like the forensic. We was like 
going to jails, talking to the inmates and all yeah. that. So I found that pretty dope. Is that like profiling people and shit like that? Um, like, but, oh, this person that did this must act like this. Um, yeah, but, but most like yeah, like yeah. like like that. Um, when I used to go to like the jails and stuff, we we would just get their side of the story. It's kind of like picking the inmates brain yeah that's kind of the dope part about forensic psychology you're, you're getting to know how a murderer or anybody Whatever rapist thinks. Yeah. how they think more than like why they do it more than you did this you yeah. know and you're doing that in high school i was doing that in high school yeah i was tr- i was i was interested in it i wasn't really yeah. like heavy in it but i was right. like oh i could possibly do that yeah for the rest of my life but music's always been in the background or like in, in, the, in front. the foreground i yeah. rather than the music the music ever into psychologists yeah, period right, that's how right. it is but yeah. school was cool i was i was a talkative person in class so you i get detention I, for talking too much and shit i was in detention for like a whole year bro it, really it, it'd be like that sometimes a whole year a whole year but i'm a good kid i promise yeah. i was a good kid like it was so funny because all the teachers love me yeah like at my high school it's just i did i did things that wasn't mature let it, me tell you something you know all that <laughs> shit to tell you about your permanent record and how yeah. this, all that's bullshit so you could tell BS. you could tell the story nobody's it, it's not even no, snitching at this it, point yeah it's not oh, it, people would think it was funny it, it's it's totally funny honestly yeah. me looking back on it it's yeah. just i got in a whole bunch of fights one school year really yeah why because it's like haters i'm hooked bro yeah. like <laughs> i understand bro i totally get it why everybody People no are... the first fight i got into yeah. is because like they jumped my sister so it's like anybody who, who fought my sister to get get a fade this is my yeah. older sister by the way yeah so i was like you can pop out we can da, 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 da. yeah and they all came to my i said i gave them my address and all that no and then yeah, it was a big riot in my um apartment up. complex oh my and, gosh yeah the helicopters all that no way true story and I'm not capping. <laughs> I mean, that shit sounds like it probably could have gone viral. But I did get suspended. They couldn't suspend me because I was like, I off went school, home. Man. Yeah, it's off school. Yeah. I went home first. Yeah. And they're like, so you went home first. And then I was like, yep. Yeah. And then I actually didn't get a lot of detention for that one. And then I got like a couple other fights. And then they were like, okay, you're, you're in detention yeah. for a whole year. But I was with my like... um teacher mom i called her my miss fraser shout out mm. to miss fraser she's she was definitely a big mentor in my life she loved me so much she was just like try to keep me out of trouble even though i was like always front on the verge. Row. like yeah. i always was you know my friend yeah. if it wasn't me it was my friends and i was right there backing them up yeah so i was yeah it was like that yeah it it's cool, i mean it sounds like it in was your fun, music that People you're used not to visit one. Me in detention. Oh, in like det- they made free hook <laughs> no cap i'm not even capping <laughs> i'm not capping you're funny. like hey put some money on my books i yeah, read detention and yeah, shit yeah yeah get my lunch money yeah yeah, lunch yeah. Money. i had to put hot cheetos in your commissary yeah. uh, it was, it's childish though that's so funny i look back at that like i mean wow. yeah when you listen to the tape though it sounds like you're not one to back down from a fight yeah, a lot I, of the I lyrics hate comfort, are kinda, I hate yeah. confrontation though. I'm not gonna. I don't like being in argument. I don't like that. Really? I don't like. I would. I would try anything to avoid confrontation. So when somebody actually gets me to that point, I feel like you damn. You try to end it quickly. I know. I feel like damn, bro. Like you really got me to a point where I'm mad. That's insane. I'm always like people who know me know me. I I will really will avoid any negative energy. I don't like drama. Like it's not yeah. me. That's not me at all. Right. Right. So I feel like bully it. I kind of like got that kind of out yeah rather than does the the title um reflect kind of those high school years of being in a school full of boys maybe you were the one fighting back yeah, i definitely it? tapped into like my high school years in order to write some of the tape mm-hmm. um because i don't i don't really think it represents me now as a person i won't go i mean don't don't get me wrong you yeah. can't play me like you can't you can't you can't get at me no type of way but I, I it definitely definitely had to tap into like the 17, 16 year old hook. Yeah. In order to get some ignorant shit out, you know? The tape is titled Bully, yeah. and there's a lot of allusions and samples to the slept on Rockstar yeah, game. Shout out to Rockstar. Bully, right? Shout out to Ro- I hope they don't sue me. I actually nah, I'm hope, sure you'll be fine. I'll be I, fine. I, yeah. I mean, maybe that'll probably sell a couple more copies yeah, of it. You know bro, what I'm saying? Like, people have been saying I had to pull out the Bully game. Did so. you used to play that? Yes. I used to watch my sister play it mostly, okay, though. Yeah. Uh, I used to pay attention to like the story mode a lot. Yeah. I thought it was dope. I've never, I played it on the Wii, but I never, it's like when we first got a Wii too. 
So, and when I when I was growing up, my mom was like, you don't need no games. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, you don't need that shit. Yeah. And then, so, when I used to, when we got it for the first time, we used to play like a lot of rock band, um, Guitar Hero, oh, um, yeah. fucking Bully. And I used to just watch her play. It. And I'm like, I'm not really good at it. So, I'd rather just watch you play. I used to just ride the bike, you know, just walk around. Didn't used to do none of the missions. Like, yeah, that, that was like me. one of those games that really got Rockstar on the map. Because it was Bro, like... that game is Fire, yeah, like, like I think fire. I think it was before the big like shift in in um the GTA games. Yeah, where, that's what I'm saying. That, yeah. That's why it was kind of dope because it's like a GTA but for teenagers. Right, right. And they really they had to think that out a lot. Like that was a dope concept. So yeah, yeah shout out to Rockstar. That shit was hard. What were you like into as a kid? Was it always music? Were you like would you be in detention writing songs and shit like that? Um, as a kid, yeah, I was always into music. When yeah. I was like a J, I wanted to be a dancer. I wanted to. I wanted to. Um, I used to go to the Millennium sometimes. Um, well, I was in two girl groups. Was that the Millennium? Um, it's a dance studio in Hollywood. Oh, like okay. One of the most popular dance studios no in Hollywood. Shit. Yeah. So I used to want to be take my goal when I was a kid. I wanted to take a whole bunch of dance classes, grow up, own a dance studio, and teach kids how to dance. So, really? Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Um, and then I met my stepsisters, and we we had a uh, we made a girl group. No way. Yeah. I was how in a girl old are you? Group. Um, this was going on from probably like 11 to 16, 17. And so you guys were singing or rapping? I was singing. Yeah. I was singing. I was the tenor. I was the lower voice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I rapped too. So I was like the rapper and then I hold the harmonies. You were like left eye in the group. Yeah. I was like the left eye. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to left eye. Did you guys get anywhere? Did you guys have meetings or anything Um, like that? Yeah. We, I did like a whole school tour. um, No way. Like a LA school tour. So I performed in front of like Crenshaw, Fairfax. Um, I opened up for Minus Behavior. That was like that time, like when all the kid groups were popping. So it seemed like a good thing right now. Yeah. It just wasn't me creative i mean honestly i was just the person that stuck out so i yeah. I, I got solo on my, my stepsisters like didn't want to do it no more so I was like i'm gonna keep doing it well tell me about it a little more because i feel like that probably plays a big role Definitely. in your development as an artist so like Definitely. were you guys like wearing matching outfits yeah. and all of this yeah well yeah me and my sister's always been into like um just being just growing up with like sisters like that are kind of like girly girl kind of like you um and we just all thought the same we all had like big dreams like uh we can do that we were watching like tlc like and this is when the tlc movie came out yeah. on vh1 and so we were like seeing all that shit and we were like bro we could we could do this yeah, exactly yeah. how we want and we would just come up with like ideas and and how we want people to like see us all the new trends that we wear we were those type of people wear our clothes backwards you thought it was fucking cool hell yeah it's totally lame shout out crisscross yeah <laughs> uh, you probably don't even know about crisscross huh? oh, come on bro jump jump that's when I was 12 years they, old it's so like, funny because the yeah. second group I was in yeah. are, this is when one of my sisters dropped out so it was just me and my younger sister Yeah. and they were trying to make us like a female crisscross no type way. shit yeah, yeah it was yeah. dope it was pretty dope Um, that's amazing so would you guys just be in the house, like, coming up with steps and routines yeah. and shit? And- um, yeah. So it got to a point where we were, like, we had artist development. Um, we had a choreographer. It was real. It was a real Who, deal. Yeah, like, who's managing you? Your mom? Uh, my, my stepdad was managing me uh, okay. and my mom. Yeah. It was kind of like a family affair type thing. But Do either of them have a background in, in music my business? My stepdad does, yeah. yeah. What He's was he like, doing? Um, he was like managing Scooter. I don't know if you know who that is. Uh, yeah, it sounds. I can't familiar. even think. Yeah. yeah, I can't even think of the name and yeah. stuff. But yeah, he was he was managing. He managed a couple people before, yeah. and he would just tapped into a whole uh, a little bit of people in the music industry. Um, and so he'd be taking you guys up to L.A. or Hollywood yeah, we or would wherever go to, for meetings. Yeah, that's when we would go to like the Millennium. Yeah, have like eight hour dance, just dancing. You probably like private tutors and shit. Yes, like that. it was like yeah. basically school for music yeah and right. i, I kind of loved it i kind of uh, it was like something i i wanted to do so i didn't really complain about it and so at a young age you're taking like meetings at labels and yeah, stuff were you guys yeah. having to perform in front of a and r's and shit like yeah, that yeah we, we had a situation when i performed in front of an a and r it's probably like the scariest shit i've ever done why as a kid this as a kid just yeah. just knowing that this could like kind of well, I, as i thought i 
it can make or break my career or right. it can be the start of something new. Like here you are at 13 going like, I have to do this or yeah. my life's over, not yeah. realizing. Yeah, that's like, how it felt yeah. like as a kid because this is all like kind of new. That, it's good to get that feeling out of the way at a young age, yeah. you know what and I mean? And that's why I feel like everything happens for a reason. Yeah. There, was, there was a reason why they were like, oh, we can't work with them. It was mostly like a, oh, the followers, we need their followers. That's where it's kind of at. And, yeah. But uh, it kind of BS to me. But yeah. um, no, I feel like I definitely had to go through all of that in order to be who I am now because I wouldn't I feel like I wouldn't be able to get on stage and have the same energy right. as I had if I'd never been through like artist development um, or studying other artists or you know just this is things I went through I feel like it definitely made me what I am right now thanks for tuning in Skull Candy wanted to show you some love for listening by hooking you up with 15% off your next purchase head over to SkullCandy.com and use the code youfeelme19 at checkout to get 15% off anything site wide yeah, it's so interesting to watch from the outside looking in. Because like I said, yeah. I've just been watching since like Ned and you guys yeah. started working. I was like, oh, this looks interesting. Yeah. And so I've been watching along in the process, making the record. And I'm like, that's so wild that he just found this talented girl off a yeah, fucking Instagram crazy, post or whatever. He but me off Automati Suspect page. Yeah, and so yeah. it's it's like everyone, or that there's an old phrase that every overnight success it takes 10 years or whatever. And it so it's forever, like- forever, guys. So when, stop, Yeah, though. so that's the thing stop. is like whenever you see somebody that's, and you're like, oh, where did this come from? Yeah. I would have never guessed that you were like had, that you were in a good group bro, there's and shit. been like five people, like people just on the internet saying I'm an industry plan. Like I promise you, I'm not a clone. I'm not yeah. a bot. I am a real person. I've right. been busy doing music my whole life. Right, right. That, that's just, it's just I mean, those are amazing me. opportunities yeah. to learn from at that age, Definitely. you know? So the second group was more like rap a group. rap group. Yeah, and, and what yeah. was that like? That was dope. I think I just, it's just dope. It was you and another girl? Yeah, it was okay. my sister. Oh, it was your um, sister. Right. Yeah, it was just dope being with somebody you grew up with, um, you trusted, um, making music with them. But I could kind of tell, like, her drive wasn't the same as mine's. Yeah. Because I'm here now, but like, uh, so that's kind of where it kind of got iffy and then mm-hmm. she like didn't want to do no more and I was like well what the fuck am I supposed to do this now? is like what four or five years ago this is like uh, I think that three group ended ago? yeah three years ago oh wow like, yeah yeah, but it feels like a lifetime ago to you, probably, huh? Yeah, it feels yeah. like a while ago. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm like, oh, yeah, three years ago. That's when I got yeah. m- with my wife. Like, that's like not that long ago. It's not. Were you guys writing your own bars? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, when we were in like uh, my girl group as a kid, we kind of met up with writers too. So it, it, that's what I'm saying. Like the writers would teach us what to do, what to write about, how, how to, to structure yeah, it. Yeah, how to structure it or how to make it easier and just like what your age is and what's going to what are you going to, you know, appealing? What yeah. is, you know? Yeah. So I, I kind of learned a lot from um, the people in my camp back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Who were your influences as a rapper? Because it sounds rapper? so new to me. And I'm just like, where did this style come uh, from? Yeah, honestly, yeah. I, I would just say my brothers, the people that I kind of, I kind of fall in love with people that are doing the same thing as me, like creatives. Yeah. Um, my brothers are the prophet, Lorado 78, like Terrell Miller, um, it, it it's just when you see stuff behind the scenes, I feel like it it, it helps you as an artist. It, it inspires you. Um, some of like the most like known people will probably be like, um, I love Slick Rick. I love the I love his persona. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I love the. Did one you grow up on Bay Area music at all? No. Kind of, I, like when I listen, I'm almost like, is there some Bay Area? People say that a lot, yeah. but no, I I wasn't really listening to Hyphy. That's yeah. why I'm saying like Ned R. I oh, met yeah. him for a reason because he really showed me. This is what you've been missing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so I right, was like, right. oh shit. Yeah. Like I, I was not put on to the high fee at all. Yeah. So it was kind of dope meeting him because he he that's what I'm saying. He like definitely mentors me. Like, you need to know these people. Right. Um and I yeah, it, it inspires me every day this listening to things I haven't heard, listening to things from like 2009. Because right. a lot of people don't know, like I am only 20. Yeah. So when like shit came off like, um, What's a good high fee song? Like, tell me when to go. Tell me when you to go. Like I was young, probably. but yeah, I was like, yeah. I was young. I was yeah. like only nine years old. So right. it's probably like, oh yeah, I know that single, but I don't know that artist. Right, right. And there's and that's a difference. Like, I yeah. can know the single, but I don't know their whole work, the totally. whole project of work. But yeah. 40s hard. Have you always been into kind of the cusps of fashion trends? You know what I'm saying? I yeah, feel like you're, I I feel like you're a forward-thinking fashionista. Yeah, yeah I want to get into the fashion world yeah. as soon as possible. So were you, were you like a little kid going to school dressing all wild? I dress, I dress 
what I could afford. I, 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 I mean, it's like I was like on Instagram, like saving a whole bunch of shit. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna wear this. I'm gonna wear that. Yeah. Or going thrift shopping. Like, oh yeah, that's hard. Maybe if we cut that. Right. You could yeah, freak yeah, it. You yeah. Could I, get I what you afford and then freak it. I was a definitely bit. freaking my clothes. Yeah. In, in, in back in the day. Yeah. So, but well, so talk to me about this generational difference because like I didn't have a fucking cell phone until I was like 23. <laughs> right. Yeah. My mom didn't buy me a cell phone. She's like, I'm not buying. So, you a when cell did phone. you get a cell phone? How long have you um, been on the internet? Because you were born into the internet, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I think I got heavy, like, onto apps, you know, Instagram and all yeah. that shit when I was, like, 14, probably. Yeah, right. Probably, like, 13. But still then, I wasn't tapped into it how I could probably be, or how I was tapped into it right now. Because I know, like, if I was probably tapped into Instagram, yeah. Tumblr, all that shit when I was younger, I would probably be a whole different other person. Yeah. Um. But no, my it's like I can't. I think it's because I was raised. My mom was like, "You don't need. You need to go outside. Yeah. You need to get off your phone." She would never let me just sit in the house. Go and be live like, life. Yeah. Yeah. She she's not like that. Yeah, it's so interesting. Again, as an older dude watching the younger artists coming up, it's like you guys seem so like you just like know how to use the internet better than Bro, us. Yeah, now. You my, know what I'm saying? Like you just look like you're my made to be tells on me it all the time. Yeah. Like when he first met me, he know nothing about like the internet, and yeah. I used to be like freaking downloading whole movies and yeah. used to be like how do you do this yeah. you be like, uh, well you know it's, it's I, not that weird bro <laughs> i come from an era where like putting a music video on youtube was like the shit you know what i mean oh, and, like, I you, and you would take months to get it right and you wouldn't put it out until it was perfect and now it's like there are viral clips where it's like you're just in Chilling. a t-shirt uh, like Chilling. on a kitchen counter like throwing peace signs rapping along yeah. and it's like something that's so simple that like somebody who was overthinking it wouldn't do would it not do at all but it's just like it just makes sense it just like, makes sense yeah uh, yeah the internet is some crazy shit did you feel like when you put out that FTN clip that it would go as hard as it did I feel like any clip I don't yeah. I don't really be knowing like I do it's like I know when I make a hit yeah. but it's like you never really know it's gonna be what it is. Like it's, you never really know when something's gonna go viral. I guess. Right. Um, I can't say I was surprised though. Yeah. But did you guys I when you guys surprised. were making that one? You guys kind of knew it was something. Yeah, we made that shit like at five o'clock in the morning. Oh wow! And then I started making the beat. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, we just need something like really fast, like adrenaline, like. I don't know. We just need something like that, Ned. Yeah. And then he just started making the the cowbells and all that shit, and I was like, okay. So now that you're going this fast, I'm gonna go even faster. Yeah. And I think it should be like a female anthem. I yeah. don't. I don't really. I wanted to just to, to appeal to the females, and I. Kinda, it's a real hot girl summer anthem, bro. And you know? I, I. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I'm kind of glad everybody feels that way about the record. Yeah, for real. So yeah, that was my goal for it. Yeah, Ned really um, flexed his. Everything that he's learned as a producer, I feel like as well. No Definitely. samples on the record. Definitely, Definitely. Yeah, Lots yeah. of 808 I, kids. He was proud of himself because that. He's like, no yeah. samples. I was like, yeah, no samples. You did it, bro. Like, yeah, that's it. Because really like it. now you guys don't have to worry about any clearances. Bro. The, he's every, like, more money for us. Everything's <laughs> ready to be on TV. You don't yeah. gotta worry about it. You yeah, know? we don't have to go through shit. Yeah, that's amazing. What was you guys' creative process like? Was it would he present you with something that was almost finished, or was it just kind of like he made every single beat in front of me? And, and you're and you're going like, oh, that maybe this year. Like, were were you kind of involved in that? I was uh, more of like the final mixing of it. Yeah, I was right. like mm, at a drop right here, or maybe you should switch the like for um, the one with me in a little house phone. Yeah, um, I was like, make it go back and forth because that's why I fuck with that the one with me in house phone a lot um he kind of switched the beats throughout the whole track uh -huh. and i feel like not too many people are doing that or wouldn't expect it uh -huh. so i, I was kind of involved in that and that much but no that was all ned and nice. uh, arb and crunch he, he he was he was featured on a couple of tracks and i was just like you you do your shit bro right you, right do anything you want yeah totally yeah tell me about the features you got booty chain on there Shout you got booty chain. um big baby scumbag Shout out big baby little house phone and chike az chike az chike Those are these guys that you've known for a while or did you just meet him through ned recently or um how that go? i knew chike yeah. he he's helped me out a lot shout out to chike um he got me on one of my performances with shoreline mafia when i opened up for shoreline mafia. okay yeah. so i kind of built a relationship with him um big baby and um booty chain that was all like over the phone but actually booty chain's been fucked with me since like 
five K followers type. So oh, really? I, yeah, I thought we really changed a yeah, lot. Yeah. yeah. In House Phone, I met him during like my um No Jumper interview. And then we actually the same day I had that interview, we went back to Ned's crib and we recorded it. Oh, and nice. that was like the first time we recorded. I recorded with Ned, met Ned and all that. Yeah. And like ever since Oh, that's that, the first time that's that the first, first time you first met time. Ned with with, with House Phone? Yeah. Wow. No so shit. It was dope. It was a dope night. Yeah, that's really dope. That's what I'm saying. When I met him, like the chemistry was like on some weird shit. It was just there. So we had to make a whole we just actually we didn't even say like we're making a project that night. We just kept making music and then yeah. probably like the sixth song, we were like, um, uh, wanna make a tape? Right, <laughs> like, right. gonna put this on the whole song, so it was dope. So let me ask you about balancing music and real life, because I think a lot of people that are wanting to get into the game, yeah. they just wanna quit everything and just dive head first, but that's not the reality a lot of times. So how have you managed to stay afloat before you took off or started to take off? You know what I mean? Like have mm-hmm. you had any weird jobs back in the day or any good I had, jobs? I had one job. Yeah, what was I, your job? It was Sonic Drive In. You worked at a Sonic? I worked at a Sonic. Yeah. I quit. That was like, I quit probably January, actually. Yeah. How long were you there? A couple of years? I was there. That was my first job. So Ever. originally, I got the job to get a prom dress. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to get a fucking prom dress. I don't need my mom to do it all myself. Right, right. Yeah. So um, I wanted to have the, like, the best prom night. Yeah. Um, anyways, yeah. So I originally got it from then. And I was like, well, I kind of need money. Um, so just stick with it. Yeah, and it was like I'm getting money. You feel yeah. me? And it wasn't that hard. Every like the manager was cool. I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna keep working here. And then it just got to a point like, and when I quit, I would just like, I just stopped going. Yeah, I was just like, I'm gonna devote myself all to my music. Right, right. So okay, so when I was your age, back in my day, back in my day, uh, as an independent <laughs> musician, it was like pretty tough to make money from it because the internet wasn't mm. what it is today you know what i mean so you had yeah, to be streaming. you had to you had to put some money into it like you had to buy tapes or cds or whatever and then yeah, sell them so, to people yeah, my to grandma's get your money still money. like um can i have a cd yeah what's up with I'll a cd i'll sell your cd i'm like yeah. we don't do that That's anymore not, yeah, yeah you're like oh it's on my it's on your phone yeah do you find it to be kind of easier now to like make quicker money as an artist mm. not that you have anything to compare it to but like yeah it, it, your music's kind of immediately in the black like you don't yeah, lose any money making it right yeah comparing to to back yeah. in the day I probably feel like right now it's definitely easier because we have the internet you guys didn't even have the internet so it was really just like <laughs> I can't even imagine I my life making, without the internet I started making music before MySpace was even around that's insane yeah like what I remember um, talking to my my homie that produces for me back in the day and going like I don't know should we put this stuff on yeah, MySpace yeah I missed the MySpace era yeah. like it was, that's the funny part like, right. I missed that whole yeah, entire yeah. era nah, that, when yeah. it was popping at least right I mean you were 10 years old yeah, when it died I, my, mom, my mom was not having that shit yeah, bro. not at all but no I feel like it's definitely easier easier to probably get pop you see like what's getting what's popping yeah, now or yeah. what type of shit that goes viral crazy shit be going viral right that. it's People like be making money over the most insane shit yeah right now because of the internet so it's a blessing and a curse i feel blessing and a curse is a good way to put it and here's why i think sometimes it could be a curse is because now it is so easy to instantly kind of hit catch your one song yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. that a lot of people forget to develop themselves as yeah. artists you feel me I agree yeah. I agree I feel like I feel like but I also do feel like a yeah. lot of people we can recognize what real is and what recognize what fake is but right. I, but this generation is is it loves kind of it doesn't love the fake but it still gives the fake more um, shine kind yeah, of yeah yeah um, I don't know. It, blessing the curse thing. <laughs> How do you feel that you you're going to, um, or do you have any plans to work towards your longevity? Is I guess what I'm asking. Like, yeah, what, I plan what on do you, being yeah. the greatest. I plan yeah. on. <laughs> I love it. I plan on taking over the world. Like, yeah, that is my goal. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want to be one of those like one hit wonders. I, I and I and I kind of hope. Like listening to the bully track, a lot of people enjoyed more than one song. Well, and that's the thing is it's such a consistent tape. There, there are every song is enough of a standout that there's no one yeah, supreme I appreciate that. song. That, you that know was what I'm definitely yeah. the goal. I didn't want p- people to like hear. That was, that's kind of I was kind of scared to drop it in the first yeah. place. I didn't want people to be like, um, yeah, the two songs were good. Right. Um, but, well, that's the thing is I think you guys made such a cohesive record that you thwarted that whole risk yeah. of being a one hit wonder off that project. But okay, but yeah, the whole thing is. It. You just never know now. Like you, you can know. accidentally make a one hit that like m- makes you. That's the only thing anybody yeah. will ever know about you. Yeah. So it's almost like kind of scary that way. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely scary. Yeah. Like when I when I did ninety, my first track that went viral, I was yeah. like, and it went up going viral. It was mostly like negative comments, and I was like, well, if this time I'm gonna get famous, this, this, I'm like, yeah. it, it got to be like that. Right. But then they warmed up to me. 
But it, it was kind of like, I actually, that's why I don't even really like mess with the internet like that. Yeah. Because when I did Job 90, it, it was mostly like negative commentary. So I was just kind of afraid to, 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 to do FTN, drop yeah. FTN and all that. But And then when I dropped FTN, it was like more positive. So I was like, was is my old music trash or um, it, it's just, it, that's what I'm saying. The internet, a lot of people play follow the leader on the Taste internet. Taste develop. Yeah. yeah it was oh, kinda, follow the leader is a yeah, good yeah. That's I, Bitch is playing. Yeah, follow the leader. Like I say it in my song. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm not capping about it. Yeah. Um, it, it is what it is though. Like I, I know, I feel like it, de- it definitely is like a warming up situation because I am a, like a female artist. A lot of people don't even like a higher pitched voice on a track. Yeah. So, and they don't know that they're doing that. It, it's like an ignorant thing, I feel. Because it's just that they're not used to used to hearing it. Like we're conditioned as, yeah. a, as a country just to like... Yeah, we're not. We're not a, just to hear like... Yeah. yeah. You're like, I don't want to say, but I want to say. I'm a dude. I'm not going to listen yeah. to this yeah. woman. Yeah. And it's like... A lot of people... Be, but a lot of dudes shit. fuck with me. A lot of dudes yeah. be like sending me my lyrics or singing their singing my song to like, fuck that nigga. He ain't yeah. be like, yeah. dude, that is funny. Yeah, that's tight. That's the most funny shit ever. So I love it. Tell me about performing. You got a you got a good early start at it with your sisters, right? Did you guys you guys got on stage a lot even back then? Yeah, it was mostly like a I have to know all my dance steps type shit though. So you're kind of almost you. You have to be so in your head. You're probably not paying attention. Yeah, we're not. It's definitely not how it is now. How I can like really feel a crowd. Yeah. Um, feed off that energy. Yeah, I can definitely feed off that energy. I but mostly when I perform, I want people to feed off my energy. Um. Like the my album release party, well, my performance, I feel like it went, I feel like it went crazy. Yeah, talk to me about it. It People was two days moshing. ago, right? Yeah, it was two days ago. Yeah, like I've never was that. Is that your first headlining hook show? Yeah, yeah. and it was packed, and that's yeah. why I was like, wow, you guys came for me to see me. Nobody else on the um flyer. Yeah. So who else, did anybody else even play or open up for you? Nah, just but DJ? I actually no. Nah, yeah, I was just DJ Ned and yeah. um. Crunch, but um, yeah. actually, House Fun ended up performing nice. and Chike. So it was like, you know, it was a surprise type thing. Nobody knew they were going to come, but it, it worked out perfectly because yeah. I feel like they deserved it for people to come out on yeah. a Wednesday night and even like House Phone is very fucking good at getting a crowd going isn't he? yeah, yeah. He's, he was dope the yeah, whole night yeah. he was talking shit the whole night yeah. on, on stage and I just had to laugh I was fucking with it that's funny he's it, dope I've been watching him develop over the years because he used to just be a dude that I would give free beers to when I bartend oh at ham God. parties and then I would see him slowly getting on stage more and more and I'm like oh shit House Phone popping now yeah he got to yeah, yeah. he definitely has that he's that type of person that's over he, the last like maybe five yeah. years or something i've just been oh, watching wow. where he was like come on man let me get a beer and then it'd be like oh you was just on stage oh, oh wow. shit that's yeah funny. yeah anyway everybody's got an origin story phone. yeah, yeah. now you've had your first headlining show do you i mean are you like fiending to do more now are you gonna play a lot more oh, shows right yeah i love that's like my favorite thing to do as an yeah. artist i'm not gonna lie i love performing my goal for this year is to perform at rolling loud Ooh, that'd be good rolling loud or, or day and night day and night book me like that's literally was my goal in january yeah when i was working at sonic like i want to perform a really loud this year yeah that's the goal <laughs> it seems achievable it, i feel like it's definitely achievable it seems i feel achievable. like this never nothing's ever really impossible yeah um people catch on quick nowadays yeah have you gotten any cosigns or people hitting you up where you're like whoa shit i didn't think i didn't like <laughs> I, i'm a fan of this everybody, person everybody everybody yeah. everybody yeah. Oh, i think my first time i ever like shit it breaks was probably with father oh yeah yeah my father cosigned and yeah. then I met father um, and then we worked together and no I was way. just like oh shit he doesn't know this so when he hears this shit it's gonna be funny as fuck yeah. but no yeah I used to grow up listening to father oh man I love father yeah it was kind of crazy I had him on my other podcast right when Young Young Hot Ebony came out and oh, I was like shit. you know who put me onto him is another IE dude Speak really yeah do you have you met Speak uh-uh, Speak, no. Speak is an IE rapper he lives in Mexico now but oh, shit. he was like yo you gotta hear this dude father and, yeah. I was, and it was like our I put summer all my fucking turn up that year i was like listen to this guy he's yeah crazy. i mean that must have been like 2014 or something i was young yeah, yeah i was yeah. young yeah high school like freshman year yeah. high school I, I, I found out about him yeah for real so you so you worked with him though yeah we worked. S- shit came full circle shit went crazy yeah. it's like you it's just like when you 14 yeah i'm fat girly and yeah. then i fast forward like five years later you're sitting right by him. We're finna record some shit. But did you hide it well, or did I you hide it? <laughs> you hid it. <laughs> uh, so, 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 yeah, I, I, felt, I kind of I feel, feel like bad. You're I kind of fan. You're like right bro, now thinking about it. I was bro. thinking about it, but I was like, I, I feel like I should have been like, bro, I, I looked up to you, but I didn't. 
You didn't do it? I didn't. Is well, that an asshole thing to do? No, nah, I think... Uh, I was playing it cool. You feel me? Oh, yeah. I mean, that. we could make this a snippet to advertising and just yeah, tag him yeah, in and be like, you, you didn't... You thought. You yeah, didn't know. He didn't know that. Yeah. But well, no, that's good dope. that you hit he's it, He's one though. of my inspirations for sure. For that's sure. really tight. Because I feel like he was just being himself. Like, I feel like it wasn't something forced. Or back in the day, I've never seen nothing like that. Yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah. This is this is the wave. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely. for real. It's amazing to see everything that Awful has done since then. Bro, and they opened up a whole new lane, I feel like. Yeah, I was like, Awful? Yeah. The, the opposite of good? Right. Like, that is clever. Like, I, I swear to God, I've never seen something like that. Especially from the IE, you don't really get... A lot of people are not hip to things um, around you, so you got to put yourself onto shit. Okay, there we go. I like that because I come from a place like that too where I really had to put myself on the yeah. shit because I was in a rural area where I grew yeah. up. And, and the IE, while it's not a rural area, even though it's only a half an hour from LA, it does... Going the people there, are very different. Going there can feel like taking a little yeah. step back in time, right? So mm-hmm. it isn't a very like fashion forward place, not a very definitely music not. forward place. I'm, I'm definitely All that the stuff. one. We are de- me and my friends were definitely the ones yeah, so like, you, doing you, different did, shit. Did you guys like stick out? It, yeah, w- definitely now. Yeah. I can't say back in the day because it's like a kid shit, you know? Yeah. But once I started like making my own money, like working at Sonic, doing what the fuck I want, I was yeah. like, okay, that's what I want to do. Dyeing my hair different colors. Nobody was even dyeing their fucking hair different color. It was like it, was, it our braids. Like no, it, it was it, it was kind of abnormal to do shit like that. Yeah. Um, but when I recently just started, I just started like coming out to L.A. Um, meeting new people in L.A. And, and when I met like some of my L.A. homies, it, it was that was shit was different too. Meeting other creatives, um, other people that want to do shit it like pushes you, you forward. Yeah, fast, it pushes huh? you. It pushes you forward, yeah. and it's just like. I didn't know you were out here doing things like this. Yeah, you meet your kindred spirits, and it's like yeah. this sense of comfort. You're like, yeah. finally, I found my fucking I found, tribe. I found you know my what I'm saying? Tribe, yeah. yeah. Shout out to LA. Yeah, I, rem- I remember that feeling as a young person when you finally find your tribe. It's just so it's so much relief. Like, ah, yeah. oh, I thought I was the only one. Bro, I really thought I was the only one. Yeah, this is a crazy. It's part. dope. Well, I'm glad you find your tribe. I'm glad that you and Ned linked Thank up. Thank you. Love the tape. I, I appreciate you coming over to the crib. I appreciate you having me, bro. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, you was like, yeah. that's lit. You know, th- this is a thing that like makes life worth living for me now as an older gent is just to talk to youngsters coming up oh, and, and, and changing what I think rap music is or was or that's should be like, you that's know what dope. I mean? It really, it really makes me happy that's to dope. see young people carrying the torch and doing cool shit. So that said... Tell the people where they can find the tape. It's everywhere, yep, yeah? Yep, it's everywhere. It's on Spotify, on SoundCloud, iTunes, shit. Um, probably even Amazon Music. I yep, don't fucking know. Just is. fucking look it up, bro. Find that shit on Netflix. Yeah, yeah no. probably on fucking Netflix. <laughs> Lifetime on the internet. Bully Rockstar of the Game. I don't yeah. know. Just go to my Instagram, I-L-Y Hook. Yeah, I L Y Hook. I love you. Hook. I love you. Hook is yeah. is that across all platforms? That's everywhere. Okay, you, you can probably type that shit on Google. You probably find me. There no you cap. go. Tap yeah. in on Instagram. Tap in on Twitter. Definitely. Um, shit. Maybe she even got a Facebook page. Who knows? Does anybody use Facebook now? That's that's confidential. <laughs> <laughs> that's so confidential. That's just for my family. Uh, what what do you feel is next for you? You already back to work? Um, yeah, I want to start working on my tape, like a new tape, like yesterday. Yeah, um, it's gonna be very different than Bully. It's not gonna be nothing like that so yeah. don't ever expect anything from me because i will definitely just either disappoint you or you'll be a surprise right so, right yeah no i'm ready just to start That's performing good. more and all that shit keep people on their toes definitely are you commuting back and forth from the riv now or where, where are you staying at like how what's Fucking, your travel like to get to ned i live everywhere bro really um everywhere anywhere i can yeah like, couch surfing right now yeah i'm like a i call my mom be like i'm a struggling artist I'm, yeah yeah it's just it's cool but you know what? Now's the age it's to fun. do yeah, it. It's Now's fun. the age to do it. Because if you can find people that'll let you crash and then you get that little Spotify right. revenue coming in right. once in a while, then at least you got food in your mouth, you're good. Yeah. And and soon that is gonna lead to some some really big things. Yeah, for you, one man. day. Yeah. Soon. I just thought, that's all it'd be like. It's be like one day. It's not a, it's not even be, it's market. gonna be like next week or next month. Get out of By here. the time this podcast comes out, it'll be like, yo, you had a hook at your house? Oh uh, shit. That's what I think. Shit, that's dope. So thank anyway, you. hey, again, thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. This was Hook. My name is Lee. Some of you guys might know me as Intuition. You can find me online at It's Intuition. And this was You Feel Me, the Skull Candy podcast Gang, where we talk to baby. artists and athletes about life and culture. And that is how we do it. Thank you so much. Ha <laughs> ha.